about it. I want to bid a shalom to the bride of the Messiah, a shalom to the 144,000, and a shalom, shalom to the nation of Israel. For you are the bride of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Today, I bring y'all more confirmation. It was unexpected. It was not planned, but Father God led us to it. Today, I have with us a sister to give us a um, give her her testimony to confirm what I'm about to tell y'all. That some of y'all are already aware, but I don't think the majority are aware of this. And hopefully, her testimony will be the confirmation you need about what we should go over now in this video. So, in the past, all oh, days or about a few weeks ago, I've been revealing unto you of what the Spirit had taught me about the eagle wings and what they mean. Well, guess what? There are some other books of our people. And these books was given to the ten lost tribe known as the House of Israel, also known as the House of Ephraim. Okay? And as the words say, they was brought to another ran known as Osiris and for the most part most of us believe that this uh, a, that this land that they were brought to was known as the Americas. Now what I'm talking about as the Americas, I'm talking about the land of Canada, the land of Alaska, the land of North America, the land of South America, Mexico and their islands. There are many things that we confirm they had came over here in history and in archaeology. Okay, because you know they have found even Hebrew writing over here in this land before the Europeans came over here. So that's proof on that. However, did you not know that the Messiah too went to them in spirit and told them sacred things too so they would know? Because I had all the wonder, you know, after the Messiah was crucified and resurrected, how would the lost tribe receive salvation? Have you ever wondered about that? See, the Father is all knowing all powerful and all seeing and if you notice that in his word he always sent his messengers to his people so he had a way for them too as well to learn about the messiah the gospel and salvation so um first let us get the date out the way right quick so the title of this word today is eagle wings part three the ten lost tribes books okay and you will have access to these books. You don't have to worry about right now. Anything, y'all, just sit back and enjoy and listen, okay? Um, today's day on the Satan's calendar, known as the Heathen's calendar, is May the 15th in the year 2020. In the Most High Year, we are in the eighth day from Adam, which is the 13th day from creation. And his year, for what I got from my calculation, is 7,487. Now, when Tishri come, it would be 7488, okay? As for Brother Hashir, he got 77518. For uh, the for Beta Israel, they got 7091. And for Yahad, who are the Jewish people, they are the converts. Most of them are known to be the synagogue of Satan, as written in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. For they follow the Tammud. When you learn about the Tammud and the, and the Kabbalah, I had came across a, another sister testimony of the, of the father her showing these things. You will see why they are called the synagogue of Satan. Again, this has nothing to do with skin color. It's dealing with First John chapter 3. Who is that seed that's implanted in your bowels, in the core of your body? Whom spirit have you joined yourself to? Okay, so the majority are known as the synagogue saying however there are some converts known as your head in the hebrew tongue y a h a d that does not follow the tamu they believe in the messiah they keep tor as well as the new gospel as well or the new testament okay or the new covenant okay because we know covenant means what to enter into marriage so there are some of them who have not followed in the ways of satan OK, you can find more confirmation about the time, the keeping of time to understand the season we're in as prophesied by the Messiah. Read second Esther chapter seven in the Apocrypha, first Enoch, first and second Adam and Eve and Matthew chapter 24. So again, we are in the eighth day from Adam and the 13th day from creation, which is the 7,487 year. 
We are in the second month of the Most High calendar. The second month is known as Zif. It is the month of the Sabbath because this is the month the Sabbath was given unto the Israelites. To learn more about that, you have to read the book of Jubilees, the King James 1611 Bible, and the work of Josephus as well. Today's date for the Most High calendar. Let me scroll down first. We will be in the fourth week of the moon. If I'm looking at this right. Oh, we're still in the third week of the moon. Forgive me, y'all. Okay, we're in the third week of the moon. We are in the seventh day, known as the Sabbath day of the Most High Week. Okay, it is the sun's second month and 26th day. And it falls on the 22nd day of the moon. On the heathen's day, you know, the Most High Day began from sundown to sundown, for he is the father of light. Okay. It will start on May the 14th at sundown to May the 15th at sundown. Take the time now to pause your screen. For more understanding of the calendar, click on the second new moon report. All right. Let us begin. Let's first get this out of the way so I won't violate any copyright laws. Okay. Now for the nitty gritty, because I want to get straight to this, y'all. Be straight to the points. Let me get back to the title page. All right. What do the 10 Lost Tribe books have to do with the Eagle Greens Part 3? Well, first, I'm going to let my sister give you her testimony of what led her to, um, to those books and what the Gentiles told her. Okay. Sister, I don't know what name you want to go by. If you want to give your name, you can, but you can go ahead and speak now. The floor is yours. Uh, I'm Sister Sheba. How are you? Um, I'm doing well, sis. Shalom, shalom. You know, I'm just feeling excitement uh, this morning. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Oh, thank you so um, and and yeah. one more thing is to speak up loud and clear because you know I have you on my speakerphone, so I want to make sure that your voice is captured. Okay. All right. Okay, you begin, sis. Yes, um, I'm just. Yes, I um I downloaded the Book of Mormon myself. Okay. Um, sometime I wanted to um find out what was in the book. And when you first read, if you don't use a sermon, you won't it, it, you won't get it because um, they change a lot of things and make it sound like the color of our skin and the curse and all that stuff. But we know that's not true. However, once I started reading it and most I gave me the sermon, it became just so clear that there this book is about the Northern Kingdom all the way. So, um, to make this testimony kind of short, I personally went down to the Latter day Saints Church where I live and inquired about the book because I wanted it in my hand so that I could take uh, do precepts with the KJV. And upon arrival, I asked, asked the lady, I asked, her, I asked her, could I have a letter, letter I mean, a uh, book on Mormon, please? And she said, um, sure. She seemed kind of confused about why I wanted you know, whatever. So I, she asked me to come inside, and I went inside with a hope. And she said, well, um, why, do, why do you want the Book of Mormon? I said, because it's our book. And she said, what do you mean it's your book? I said, it belongs to the Northern Kingdom Ten Tribes. And she said, how, how do you know this? I said, because my spirit told me. We're the people of the book. And she said, yes, you are from the Northern Kingdom Ten Tribes. The Northern Ten Tribes are here in America. I said, I know. And she said, oh, my goodness. I said, she said, come on, come on in. She took me in the office. And it was the group of ladies in there, and they all wanted to talk to me or whatever the case may be. And I sat down, and, you know, I told them that, yeah, we're from the Northern Kingdom. I said, no, I know, because my spirit told me. It was confirmed, especially after reading, I started reading the book. I said, that's why I wanted a hard copy. Oh, she admitted it. I was like, oh, my goodness. Hold for a minute, sis. I'm sorry. Mm 
Sorry about this, sis. Go ahead. Yes, uh, she admitted it was confirmation for me. I didn't need her to admit that for me in the first place, but she did. And um, I uh, I said, oh, wow. So, so I just want to pause you there just to make sure because we had a brief interruption. So they uh, was telling you who you are. They agreed yeah. that we are the Israelites. Yes, she definitely admitted it. She said, the Northern King, King Trash, yes, you are, and they are here. No, and she said, "How did you know?" I said, "My spirit told me." So um, she confirmed it, but I already knew already inside that it was true. Because there's no way. Because if you read the KJV, it really stops about where the Northern Kingdom went, and it's really no more information on them. That's how you know. Also, it confirms me there had to be somewhere other than everybody staying in Africa. No, they're he we're here. We've been here. So. Also, um, also share a little bit about, about your lineage and what you find out through this as well. You were sharing with me one day. Um, I'm sorry. What, you, what, oh, you what she said about keeping up with our lineage, what they were doing. Oh, yes. Uh, the, um, they wanted me to go online and do the Ancestry.com while I was there. And I asked her, why did she want me to do that? Okay. Then I realized that they have all of our information. They have our writings. If you read the Book of Mormon, it talks about the plates and the books and the chapters they wrote on. They have that information. They already have it. And the, the main place is Utah. They have all the Northern Kingdom tribes, North, uh, Northern Kingdom information. Why do they have it? Uh, I believe the Most High allowed them to receive all this information for a latter time so the Northern Kingdom get their hands on it and then open it up for more people to understand that we're the people. And so that uh, the Northern Kingdom can further wake up, I, I would say. Further wake up and understand that we're the people, we're the children of the Most High. So, and now as with the other books as well, the Most High, just like in the book of Daniel, says, see what the book for the time and the end, minutes should run to and fro, but knowledge should be increased. This is for the increase of knowledge because the books that are coming out now in the Most High, he, he allowed the Gentiles to hold on to it. They didn't know why, but it was for our, our, our purpose in the end to start giving the oracles out to our people as well as to the Gentiles. Yes, and I just want to um, confirm with you, just like with the King James 16 Bible, we know there have been things added or things removed, such as the word Easter. When you look at, when you um, study about words, especially when you look at when the word came to existence and when the Bible was written, like, and also like the word Jew, I believe the word Jew is a um, 18th century word that was written, mm -hmm. that, that came into the um it came to existence in the year of, in, in the year of 1700s also when you look at the word easter because when you go into strong concordance you learn that that word easter replaced the word passover and this is this is what we're telling y'all israelites and gentiles that we know these heathens you hear me heathens we're in our sacred books the sacred word that Yah gave to the israelites and we know they had this some manipulation however what i'm telling y'all for those who are under the spirit of Yah, who is the comforter, known as the Messiah, for those who are under him as your teacher, as your schoolmaster, he will still lead you to all truths. Do not put these books away. These books are the evidence against the heathen. The truth of Yah can still be revealed in these books. Because let me, how long I've been preaching this unto y'all. And from what the spirit taught me, he led me to certain precepts of what we're about to go in now that confirmed was written in the book of moments so what happened y'all and since i'm going to just say it one more time just to stay on the phone for me briefly right quick i was doing some research y'all know me i've been working on something for y'all and in the middle of this um the father led me to this book and i'm trying to see where to go at now let me see let me see it was i'm trying to find it lord have mercy it was here we go. I went to the pseudograph site, okay, and there they had these books of Abraham. So I was just going through the books of Abraham. But then one of the books of Abraham led me to the Mormon site. And I said, okay, well, 
where the book of Abraham has to be in one of these books. So I start clicking on some of these books. And when I click on The Pearl of Great Price, this is the book you want to go to. The Pearl of Great Price. It will lead you to some of these. Um, it will lead you to the books of Moses, the book of Abraham, and dealing with the book of Matthew, which we're about to read now. So we're going to get started on that. But sister, I want to say thank you for your oh, testimony. Let me also add something. Go ahead. Um, I follow a group of uh, um, people who are with the Northern Kingdom. Um, they don't really know who they are yet, so I'm trying to assist them in getting to where they are. But they're trying to figure it out because they know that something is different about them. Some mm -hmm. of them know, but a, a lot of them do not. Mm -hmm. um, and she, one of the ladies that has this um, particular group interviewed a um, Gentile one day, and the Gentile admitted uh, that a lot of them already know that we're the people from the Northern Kingdom, but mm -hmm. they won't say anything. She admitted that she, they know. They are, a lot of them already know this, but it's, it's like a big secret that they hold. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's to keep the power, whatever the case may be, they think they keep the power. But they, they, a lot of these Gentiles already know that we're the people, uh, and a lot of them do not. And let's be honest, a lot of them don't. They just, just cannot possibly believe that we're the people. Um, but a lot of them actually do know that we're the people. She admitted straight up. She said, "Yes, you're the, you're the American Indians. You're from the Northern Kingdom." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "See." <laughs> and you know um, what? That it just tied back into the book because the father told us that that these heathens would be envious of us. It's written mm -hmm. in the book. Also, um, what else I was going to say on that, with that, um, it also would confirm the prophecy that's written in Ezra chapter 38 to chapter 39, that until Yahuwah, our Father in heaven, get his honor and glory from mm -hmm. mankind and from the Israelites, then he would introduce to the world who we are. That's so right. this is why I'm telling to you Gentiles. For those who come against us and say y'all not the Israelites, we don't care. It's not about proving a point to you because this awakening is by the hand of y'all. This is for our people. In other words, whether you believe or not, we don't care because it's written in prophecy that Yahuwah is going to reveal who are his people. So right now it's going to be our word against your word. And there's nothing you can do about it because this is by the hand of Yah. As we see, it's the awakening is, is growing so fast that these heathens don't know what to do now. They panicking. They come up with so many false books. They even go into our people who have assimilate themselves to them to get to get, to to continue to spread these lies. But as my grandma would say, you know, a lie go go flying by, but here come the truth. Cleaning up the lie mess. And that's the season we are in. Truth is here now. Cleaning up the lie mess. And those who say they are a follower of the Messiah. Those who say they are saved and sanctified or who have received a new covenant. Here's your test. The disciples, the Messiah's disciples. I hope I said that right. <laughs> if you are a student or a believer of him, you will support truth for he is the spirit of truth. So you have to make up your mind today. Will you continue to follow lies or you or will you bring the truth forth? And if in doubt. Hmm? Can, I, can I say one more thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, in the book of Hosea, chapter one, um, verse eight, and, you know, it talks about Loi me and Loro Hama, where the most I told the northern kingdom, where I'm not your, I'm not your Elohim. Well, in um, verse 10 of Hosea, it says, um, in verse 9, 10, it says, Then said, You who will call his name, Lord, me, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your Elohim. And verse 10 says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said unto them, You are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living Elohim. So the most I may have cast us off, but he never forgot his people. That is the covenant he made. He, never, he would never forget his people. He would break, break his own covenant. So a Gentile, a Gentile, there's no need for you to be upset about it or whatever the case may be. We don't hate anybody no matter what has happened to us. It's just the fact that you have to come to this understand, understanding 
that the most high does have a people that you have to recover. Okay? And for um it will behoove you, Gentile, in love to accept this uh understanding so that we can all move on to something greater. Oh yes. Oh, yeah, because he um, does have something greater for, for the bride and for the hundred forty four thousand that we have been talking about for the past couple of days. It's the greatest heritage. It's an inheritance that Israel did not understand what the Father had prepared for them. Absolutely. So now it has been opened to the bride and for the 144,000. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, sis, I want to thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh, that's what I got to get credit to. We need to get credit to what? What's his name? Because I, I, I don't say it right. I even leave, I think I leave out a word. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's Big Brother Judah. Did I say that right? We need, we need to give shout outs to him because he was the one that brought these books um, yes. attention to the masses. OK. And again, I know I know these Gentiles, such as like the Christian apologists, they're going to go in there and they, and they see these words that was inserted. But, but here's the, the test. Read the book of Leviticus chapter 13 to Leviticus chapter 14. And another proof is found in Matthew chapter five. The true color of an Israelite hair is black or gray. The Bible say white because white represent your represent the crown of wisdom. Okay, wisdom is upon you. So that is a trait of antiquity that has not been whitewashed or 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 or, or put away. In other words, they couldn't um mix it out of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. And a trait of my brother's hair, which is Esau, is red hair. And when you read, uh, you go to Wikipedia and read about red hair, you will learn that uh, they that the Gentiles thought that the original Jews had red hair. Go read about it in, in the days of the European. And because he is the smallest among them, yeah, he's the smallest among them. Look how the red hair has mixed with other tribes. This is how you got brunettes hair this is how you got what they call strawberry blonde you can see the red hues so you can too see where our brother went to throughout the four corners of the earth now when it comes to our brother we know the most how we deal with him because he had went into the in the ways of Cain however an individual Edomite can receive salvation and fall into the group of the bride remember there's three groups the bride and Messiah the 144 and the nation of Israel they too can repent and we know what 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 repentance truly mean that means stop doing wickedness and evil and love your brother Jacob okay yeah. but yeah so oh uh, they too as an individual can come into the bride just as the tribe of Dan remember what what happened with the tribe of Dan when you read Revelation 7 and Ezekiel chapter 40 to 48 and the and the book that Dan wrote to his children so just as an individual Danite can come into the bride, you know, because they can't be in the 144, okay, but they can come into the bride. The same for a Edomite, and I know a lot of Israelites now turn it over. However, you have to remember, Yah is a righteous judge, and he looks at the seed, the spirit that one has joined himself to in covenant. This is what it's about. So read First John chapter 3 and John chapter 4. OK, now for as the nation of Edom, yes, they will receive the judgments that are written in the book of Obadiah and the book of um, Amos and the book of um, Acts, as well as many other prophets. Because when you look at what they are doing to us today, they hate us so much. They hate us because we are your chosen people. And they're still angry today about that. So that's what's going on. But sis, let me go uh, ahead. Also, oh, go ahead. Again, mm -hmm. um, Psalm 83 tells you who conspired. And the reason why there's so much confusion going on right now, a lot of chatter, is mm -hmm. because Satan is busy, number one. And number two, um, the northern kingdom is here and Judah is mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And they're amongst each other. And Judah we does not know that they are amongst their own people of the Northern Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And it was designed that way by the Messiah. If you keep on reading the Book of Mormon, you'll come across the information. Okay. It was designed that way because of, um, um, Messiah um, said it would be this way. Yes. Towards the end, because he has to raise the prince of Judah first. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. So right now, they, and the, the reason why they keep so much confusion going on with our people and our people don't recognize it is they don't know they're amongst their own people. Yes. And that's yeah. where by the prophet Isaiah too were confirmed as well. How Ephraim, mm-hmm. I think what was it? It was, was the word envy used or whatever against Judah. Yeah. yeah, we can see that going on as well. Yes, mm-hmm. man. And that's why they want to keep the confusion so they don't never want us to figure it out. But the heathens are here. We've been here. We have not left anywhere. We've been here all the time. And mm-hmm. all the to with the sermon. You can see, see how Columbus came in and most allowed Columbus to come in. Yes. And to, to do what he did because our forefathers started messing up after they made a promise that they would keep his law and mm. commandments. Some of that. That's yes. why it's happened. He allowed the Europeans to come over and take over and believe that they were the people. Yes. But we know that they're not. But the they're not. Allowed, this is what they happened so that he can um, bring his people back. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. And oh, that brings me to, um, it was something you were saying. I was thinking about the scriptures. Yeah, the song of Moses. Read um, Deuteronomy chapter 30 to 31. Also, it's also in Deuteronomy how Joseph or Abraham will bring the tribe to the end of the world. And the end of the world was talking about, which, um, which is all the rest, which is what I just went over about the Americas. So it's all in the Bible. It's like we have peace up, peace up, you know, so much to confirm this. Um, I'm trying to think, was there anything else? Just like in the other videos we had talked about, um, and it's dealing with um, something with the gathering. But for those who are new and just watching this video for the first time, this is a part I'm just giving unto y'all. Y'all need to watch the part on the um, the rapture doctrine. The mystery of the eagle wings, the saints in white, and the marriage supper of the lamb. Because this is what this part going to tie into. All them, all those things that I have built unto you are what the spirit has shared with me. So you not will not be deceived. There's a lot of um, leaders and stuff coming out now. And to make that short, y'all need to pay close attention to what they say. Because they give you hints who they are. If they support that six pointed star and the five pointed, well, I'm sorry, let me say this again. If they support the six pointed star or the five pointed star and tell you that y'all don't understand what you're talking about, and even though it's in the book, even though that's archaeology proof that those um, idolatry symbols existed before the nation Israel was created, and they tell you, well, the things I'm going to share with you has to be done in secret. Y'all better look out because mm-hmm. you know what? You know what the words say about things that's done in secret. Well, y'all has a way of revealing that. And a lot of that stuff pertains to the Kabbalah. And I had met another sister in, in the body of the Messiah who has been having dreams. And I think I haven't shared that video. She didn't know anything about the Kabbalah. And when the father showed that to her in the dream, it showed how these Jewish people today was was practicing what's in the Kabbalah. They don't practice what's in Torah. I'm talking about the ones who are known as the synagogue of Satan. I'm not talking about those who came out of that set who believe in the Messiah, okay? But anyway, those converts, but guess what the converts got it from? From our people, the Pharisees. They taught it. Remember how they were making proselytes and all that kind of stuff? So it came from our people. And that's why the Messiah said that, you know, you are of um, your father, the devil. Um, you follow your father's customs and traditions. And what the Messiah was saying that what based on what it was, they was not following Torah. They were not following the instruction that Yahuwah gave them to them. OK, so as as the spirit teach y'all, what you have to understand is history, history on this. Hold on, y'all. Okay, we're sorry about that, y'all. Um, we're back on telling y'all having a morning, but let's go ahead, sis. What you were telling me about what the father said? Uh, I said I picked the Gentiles or the Indians or whatever the case may be. Not the Gentiles and he, um, the most part, but it wasn't by y'all's hand that caused all this happen. You didn't come over here and dominate by your power. No, it was given to you by the Most High. Okay, and now that you know this. That the Most High gave you the power for a short time, and your time has ended. You have to conform to what the Most High says now, because if you do not, and if it's in the Book of Mormon, you do not repent. 
you're gonna go in the lake of fire. He says that very clearly because he's very upset with what you did with you know, people did to our people. He, he would never forget that. Neither would I. But I'm not angry with you. And and also Deuteronomy um thirty two twenty six the most I said this. He said, I said I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. So it was not anything that you did. So you gotta come down off your high horse in the pride. Because you think you have everything here now? No. No, 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 no. Yeah. Israelites, do y'all hear that? It was the father that did this. And, and what my sister is saying to you, Gentiles, when you look at all the captivities that our people have went into, and, it's, and, it's, and it started off with Antios the fourth Epiphanes, that wicked Greek, that wicked Greek king, um, who is like the first anti Messiah that that Daniel's talked about, and we know after him many came after him. Out of all the captivities that our people have went through, the, uh, the Europeans are the worst, and those nations who have joined the Europeans, y'all are the worst. When you learn the history of what y'all did to our people, it was, that's not human. That was inhumane. And to turn a blind eye because we are the only nation of people who have not been um, compensated for what y'all did. And we still won't. Y'all ain't going to do it. We all know that. Also, the Messiah had also said unto us in the book of Luke that we would go into captivity into all nations. So we are throughout the four corners of the earth. The northern yep. kingdom went through captivity and the southern kingdom went through captivity. And we have many great squadrons on YouTube. I'm trying to think of that guy named, what's his name? Turtle Gang on YouTube. Yeah, he gave an extensive history on the northern kingdom and how and what they did unto uh, our people. Also, mm -hmm. we have Ronald Dalton. I think I said his name right, do you? Who is a great scholar on our history and what they did to our people. So out of all the captivity, I think this is the worst of the worst. They were terrible. But it was written to happen. You know, it was prophesied what they would, you know, some of the things were prophesied. But, you know, such as making um, things out of our skin. They would take our hair and use it as stuffing for furniture. Oh, I mean, it goes, y'all, it's terrible. Oh. It's terrible. And, yeah. Yeah, and to turn a blind eye and say, forget about it. Well, I put it like this. Do y'all forget about 9-11? No. So why should we why should we forget about our history and we not? Because our history tells us who we are. It fits it fits the song of Moses. It fits the curses that's listed in Deuteronomy twenty eight and I believe Leviticus twenty six. It, it also fits all the on what the prophets say about Israel and what the Messiah said about Israel. Because Messiah said, you know, I'm gonna say this again in the book of Luke. He said we would go into captivity into all nations no other nation has our history our enslavement our tribulation okay and i'm speaking both to israelites and gentiles y'all need to hear this this is truth and we cannot run from truth because this is where the healing begin this is where the remission of sins begin we have to face truth and once we face truth we can make it right with yah and with Yahushua Hamashiach, who is, who is the Messiah and the Son of God, the second Adam. Also, says in the book of Daniel, um, chapter 9, verse 12 through 13, it says this, And he has confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges and judges, by bringing us up a great evil. For under the whole heaven have not been done, and have been done upon Jerusalem. And it is written in the law of Moshe, Moses, all this evil has come upon us. We may not our prayer before Yahuwah our Elohim, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. So under the whole heaven, no other nation, no other people has experienced anything, nothing like what our people went through. So don't even try it and say that, oh, we were just slaves. You, you were indentured servants, yes, but you were not in captivity like that. You were, you were released after seven years, and then you took over the land and took our property from us here. 
see, that's what they don't understand. They were indentured servants. A lot of them were indentured mm-hmm. servants. They came over to prison. So and they, and they, they even now, <laughs> if, even now, look at the condition of our people. Look at the justice we we receive in their courts. Our men are getting killed every day, and nothing's being done. Well, that's what the coronavirus is about. Um, it's part of the um, what they're doing, and along with the five G, they mm-hmm. want to try to stop what's coming, and they're trying to alter time loop, and they're not going to be able to do it. They think they are. And you got to remember, Satan put these things in their mind. Yeah. You're trying to alter end time prophecy. It's not going to happen. It's already written. Yeah, because whatever, like I said before, you can go north, east, south, or west. It's all going to work out to good of y'all. Hallelujah. And a great testimony of that, look at Joseph. Look at what he went through. He went through great evils. But at the end, it was all to the glory of y'all. And in the midst of that, y'all rewarded him. Okay, he became a great, I would say like a king or a leader in Egypt. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So no matter what you do, oh, wicked ones, you cannot stop this. You cannot stop the awakening. You cannot stop what's about to come to pass. And that and and what we're saying is that the Hebrew Israelites would no longer be the tail anymore. They would be the head. But in this time, they would be ruling in righteousness. Yah and Yahusha will be over them. Things will be equal. I mean, things will be righteous in the kingdom. Yes. Not wicked stuff going yes. on now. And, and, no, uh huh. Go ahead, sis. So gracious that he could have. He could have just said like he did. I'm just catching you. All I ain't never looking on y'all. He didn't say that. He gave you an opportunity to repent. Yes. Okay. So he's a righteous so judge. He's still giving y'all the opportunity to repent. I would say take it. <laughs> yes. Do you hear that Israelites in the towel? Yahuwah is a righteous judge, so it's time to repent. And sis, let me go ahead and get this word out. Cause I don't want to make this long. Cause when they when they read what's in the book of Matthews, in the Mormon's book, mm-hmm. known as what the uh, I think it's, it's called the pearls. Mm-hmm. Okay, pearls a great price. Your mouth gonna drop. Thank you, sis. You're welcome, sis. You have a wonderful day. All praise to the Most High Yahuwah. Okay. Hallelujah and shalom, sis. Okay, let's begin. Matthew, and keep in mind, you know the history about Joseph Smith. He's he's no prophet of y'all. He went to our people and he stole these sacred books. But let's we're gonna read it as is. Okay. An abstract from the translation of the Bible as revealed to Joseph Smith, the prophet, in 1831. Matthew chapter 23, verse 39, and chapter 24. Chapter 1. Yahushua foretells the impending destruction of, of Yerushalem. He also discourses on the second coming of the Son of Man, the Son of Adam, and the destruction of the wicked. For I say unto you that ye shall not see me henceforth and know that I am he of whom it is written by the prophets until ye shall say, Blessed is he who cometh in the name of Yahuwah in the clouds of heaven and all the holy angels with him. Then understood his disciples that he should come again on the earth after that he was glorified and crowned on the right hand of Yahuwah. Verse two. And Yahushua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him, for to hear him, saying, Master, show us concerning the buildings of the temple, as thou hast said, they shall be thrown down and left unto you desolate. And Yahushua said unto them, See ye not all these things, and do ye not understand them? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here upon this temple one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And Yahushua left them and went upon the Mount of Olives. Now, I do want to mention this. Pay close attention to verse 3. He's giving y'all a hint. And in archaeology, they have found this area. But the channel has some mystery on that. But let us keep going. And he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him probably saying, tell us when shall these things be, which thou hast said concerning the destruction of the temple and and the Jews. And what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? 
or the destruction of the wicked, which is the end of the world. So the end is really <laughs> taking care of these wicked people. The, all this wickedness in the earth, not only with people, but also dealing with the principality, Satan and, and his angels. Okay. And Yahushua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Again, Israelites and Gentiles, this is not about you. It's about the whole thing, that seed that dwells in your bowels. Go on the channel and learn more about that seed that dwells in your bowels. Verse 8, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Do you hear that? Many false prophets. And you know no prophet in the Most High God support no five-pointed star, no six-pointed star. Look at Elijah. He preached against that mess. He preached against idolatry. And some of these messengers are telling you they what they support. But because they bring some great information or some or so-called truths, you overlook that. Don't overlook it. They're telling you. Remember, the children of Satan does like the serpent did unto Eve. Mix truth with lies. They give you a little bit until they get your report. And once they have your once they have your rapport, your trust, they can come in and deceive you with many great things. But once the greatest thing, they say, come on here, let me teach you in secret. Mm -hmm. Look out. When the word of Yah said that his spirit shall teach you all things. So, yes, what I'm telling you, seek Yah. Don't be following me. Don't follow no man. Follow the spirit of Yah. If you don't have it, the word tells you, seek and it shall be given. Ask and you shall find an answer. Knock and the door shall be uh, open unto you. All you have to ask is as in. All you have to do is ask in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. But let us keep going. Verse 10. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We can see that wickedness has spread throughout the four corners of the earth. It's so terrible. Even a prophet Isaiah said this, that they would call good evil and evil good night, day, and, and day, night. It's in the word. Verse 11. But he that remaineth steadfast is not overcome. The same shall be saved. We know why we overcome. It's again because of that seed that dwell in us that make us the children of Yah. Verse 12. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet concerning the destruction of Yah, you show him. Then ye shall stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. We ought to know that has already came to pass. 70 AD. Please, my brothers and sisters. Look at what the prophets are saying. We even have Josephus to confirm this has already came to pass. Verse 13. Then let them who are in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop flee and not return to take anything out of his house. Now to let him who is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and unto them that give sucked in those days. When you read the work of Josephus, you will see why the Messiah says this. Therefore, pray ye, Adonai, the Lord, that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then in those days shall be great tribulation on the Jews and upon the, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, such as was not before sent upon Israel of Yahuwah since the beginning of their kingdom until this time. No, nor ever shall be sent again upon Israel. Now, this is one of the verses that we can see that where some things were left out. And it, and I'm, I have the precept to confirm that the tribulation that the Messiah is talking about is dealing with the Jews and those who join the Jews. Yes. Here go the proof. When you go to the book of John, chapter 16. Let me see where it will flash. It, he tells you the John and the book of Ezra have it. John chapter 16, the Bible summary. The Messiah comforted his disciples against tribulation by the promise of the Holy Spirit. I mean, by the promise 
the Holy Ghost, and by his resurrection and ascension, assureth their prayers made in his name to be acceptable to his Father, priest, peace in the Messiah, and in the world of affliction. I'm going to start with verse 30. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and it is not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from Yah. Yahushua answered them, do, do, do ye now believe? Behold, the hour coming, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. Do you hear that, Israelites? What the Messiah is saying to us. Behold, the hour cometh, ye is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. As the Messiah said, once the shepherd is removed from the earth, the sheep shall be scattered. Do you hear that, Israelites? We are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, as prophesied by the prophets of Yah, as written in Torah, we shall be scattered. And the Messiah said again, we shall go into captivity among all nations. Verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. See, he's telling the Jews, we're going to have tribulation in this world. But be a good cheer, I have overcome. That's 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 one precept. Another precept is found in 2 Ezra chapter 6. We're going to go to now. And I can understand why the um, apologists don't want to go on these sacred books. It's too much truth. They want to hide it. And I'm all Christian apologists. Y'all know who I'm speaking of. The cab is still being wicked, I see. And he has not taken warning that I had given him years ago. But that's okay. The Father is setting you up, Rakab. Keep on spreading lies and deceit. The world will soon see who you truly are. All right, let's keep going. Second Ezra chapter 6. The Bible summary says this. Yahuwah's purpose is, is eternal. The next world shall follow this immediately. The Father wants me to remind you. The Father had let me come across a Catholic Bible. And see the books that they had before the Protestants taken out. The also the Father want me to remind you of the Jews in Ethiopia. For they have all of the sacred books that was ordained for the masses to read. Again with these Christian apologetics who come against us being the children of Israel. Who say that we are not. Who come against us. That's what I'm talking about. And deny our true nation. Our true tribe. The Father has left witness in the earth for you, Israelites and Gentiles, to confirm with you about our books. And yes, the heathens have been in them. Work of Josephus and all the books that are listed in the Ethiopian Jew, I mean, in the Jews who come found in the land of Ethiopia. The evidence is there. You have to see, y'all, again, these things come by spirit, not by, not by man. The spirit of Yah said, teach you as written in first John chapter two, verse 27 and John chapter 14 to um, chapter 15 to chapter 16. I'll we'll start over again. Yahuwah's purpose is eternal. The next world shall follow this immediately. What shall fall out at the last? He has promised more knowledge and reckon up the works of the creation, and complain that they have no part in the world from whom it was made. The Father is also bringing this to my attention. We know we have some bad apples among us Israelites who are not giving the whole truth of y'all. And we know the Christian apologetics too have um, only focus on those bad apples and not showing the good apples. Because we do have Groups who do speak against the bad apples, such as the school of the Hebrews, the uh, Israelite, the Israel of God assembly. We have many groups, but what YouTube does, you YouTube. What I had to learn was 
us to find the other groups who are not like the camps, the wicked camps. I had to filter y'all just to find them. So what I'm telling y'all in this fourth beast kingdom, which is Rome, and my brother Edom is ruling, as prophesied by Ezra as in this chapter, chapter 6. They had set sayers before you Israelites and Gentiles to divert y'all from the truth that is coming out. See, these camps, who are going to deal with them? Remember, he said he's going to purge out the rebels in the wilderness. So he's going to deal with these camps and their false doctrines that come from Satan. Okay? Because when you study the history of their founders, it goes back to the commandment keepers who got their knowledge from the Jewish people. Yes, yeah, there. Now, with the Christian apologetics, they were so quick to point the finger at these bad apples. They, too, have come in the same mannerism as them. They behave like them. When the world tell us not to debate and they still go around debating and they put themselves on platforms and say, look at me, come and subscribe to me and come and join me and all this kind of foolishness. And none of them are following the word of y'all. See, what I warned them, I said, y'all doing the same thing as them. You bring in confusion. You bring in strife. And that is not the word of y'all. That is not a disciple of the Messiah. He gave us specific instructions on how to carry out this word. So I know why they doing what they doing. They was not called by y'all. They doing things according to their own agenda. And to be called by y'all, you have to fall in the same manner as the Messiah, as his apostles. Look at Paul. Go back and read the word of how you are called. The book of Numbers 11 and 12, Acts chapter 2, Joel chapter 2. That's how you are called. And they are not called. You can tell there's no signs upon them. That's I had to bring that out. The Father wanted me to just bring that out so y'all can pay attention. That's why I look at them from afar because I'm like, they're not following the word of y'all. But yet they're criticizing the bad apples. And they have became like the bad apples. Yeah, the Christian apologetics. Some of them have became like the bad apples. Like the right, we have a saying in my in my nation, in my tribe. It's like the pot calling the kettle black. Mm, mm, mm. Shake my head. Now we're gonna go to verse eighteen and nineteen. I'm sorry about that. When the father brings to my attention to speak, it's for a reason. And also, he wants you to. Um, he want me to bring this out. Those who had came to me behind another name, you know who you are. Don't think I don't know you or who I was talking to. The Father will reveal you, and you will be judged for that. For you had came to take his pearls and do as what a swine do to pearls, to chomp on them or to trodden on them. Shame on you. But y'all would deal with you. Do you hear me? You think my warning is nothing? You will soon see. Y'all would deal with you. Let us begin. Second Ezra chapter 6. This is dealing with the tribulation of the Jews to confirm what's written in the Mormon's book called the, the Pearls of Great Price. Verse 18. And it, and it said, Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth and will, and will begin to make inquisition of them what, that, what they be that have heard unjustly with their unrighteousness. And when this, when the affliction of Zion shall be, be fulfilled, and when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, then when I show these tokens, the book shall be opened before the furnace, and they shall see all together. So I read verse 18, 19, and 20. And notice here, it's talking about the affliction of Zion. Again, it's dealing with the Jews and those who have taken on whole covenant with the Jews. Do y'all see this? So these are two of the precepts will confirm what's written and what we just read in the book of the pearl, a great price that the Mormons have. Okay. So now we have confirmation what the great tribulation that he's talking about. 
let us keep going. Verse 19. All things which have befallen them are only the beginning of the sorrows which shall come upon them. And except those days shall be shortened, there, there should none of their flesh be saved. But the elect's sake, according to the covenant, those days shall be shortened. Behold, these things I have spoken unto you concerning the Jews. And, and again, after the tribulation of those days which shall come upon Jerusalem, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Messiah, or dare believe him not. For in those days there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that, if possible, they shall deceive the very elect who are the elect according to the covenant. Remember when I shared y'all about my about my sister dream when she was so worried about me and, and what she saw in a dream was me and then and then she saw the menorah. Yeah. Read Zechariah chapter four and the book of Exodus to to learn what the menorah looked like. It's seven. It's, it's a it's a um large candlestick. But this candlestick is not what what, what the Europeans have. It is seven stems that come off of one stem that has little bowls on top of it that hold the olive oil. OK, that is what they burn. All right. But she saw in a dream a menorah behind me. She did not see no six pointed star. She did not see no five pointed star. She saw the menorah and that menorah represent Revelation 11. The two candlesticks, which represent the house of Judah and the house of Israel is written in Zechariah chapter 11. That's what she saw. Yes. So with this verse that I had just read unto you, I, too, have came across many great people. Who gave great truth and they almost deceived me, but it did not happen. Would also bring me to mind of other things that the Father has shared with me through his messengers. Yes, he has sent prophets and prophetess unto me. He has also given dreams unto me of um of where I would be in the kingdom, as long as I too make it in. Do you understand that, Israelites and Gentiles? Just because I preach his word, I still have to work out my salvation. But he has shown unto me of what he has for me in the kingdom. He has given me dreams, too, of what he has for me in the kingdom. So I'm not speaking this out of the side of my mouth. I'm coming to you by testimony. Okay? All right, let's keep going. Verse 23, behold, I speak these things unto you for that sake, and you also shall hear awards and rumor awards. See that ye be not troubled, for all I have told you must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say, un say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not, for as the light of the morning coming out of the east and shining unto the west and cover the whole earth so shall the coming of the son of man be that's a mystery on that one y'all and tor was foreshadowing this for those who have been all uh, watching these teachings the mystery that was revealed unto y'all that's written in the Viticus chapter i think it's chapter 16 or chapter 17 if not Watch the video that has the cover page seven, and you will see what I'm talking about. Tor was given a lot of great mysteries, but let's keep going. And here's the first we do. You want to highlight that's dealing with the eagle wings, okay? And now I show unto you a parable. Behold, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. So likewise shall my elect be gathered from the four corners of the earth. Do you all hear that? It confirms what's written in the, in the apocalypse of, of Elijah. It confirmed the video that I shared with you with the eagle wings, the mystery of the eagle wings. I got to read this again. And now I show unto you a parable. Behold, wheresoever the carcass is, there would the eagles be gathered together. So likewise shall my elect be gathered from the four corners of the earth. Remember, Yahuwah is a righteous, <laughs> he's a righteous guy, y'all. We know destruction is coming to Babylon. We know after the destruction of Babylon, we're going to have the marriage supper of the Lamb to take place. Okay, so we know that based on the time of the event. And we also know in the Americas, we have the house of Judah and the house of Ephraim. 
the house of Israel is here. Okay, we have these two kingdoms here. All right, and they are to walk the four corners of the earth. You mean to tell me y'all going to destroy Babylon when we have the sick here that's on their beds who cannot get up? We have people with certain health conditions who are dependent on machines for life, such as a dialysis machine, such as a ventilator. OK, you mean to tell me he's going to destroy Babylon when we have people in prison? You mean to tell me he's going to destroy Babylon when he have people who are poor, who are lame, who are blind, who are pregnant, who are severe in birth? Do you, do you do y'all, I mean, y'all need to think about this. He said. Do his prophets and through his work that he would get out of his people for he would be known as the one that delivered his people out of the land of the north and throughout the four corners of the earth. No man, no one would take his honor and glory. This is the proof. The eagles represent the eagle wings and the eagles wings represent the angels that should gather his people. Go back and watch those parts. If you didn't understand what I was telling unto you, go back and watch those parts for those scriptures, for that word. Because you have to ask yourself, why do the Father use eagle wings in Revelation chapter 12? Great mission that many don't understand. Verse 28, and they shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Behold, I speak for my elect sake. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. Let me just hold on. Behold, I speak for my elect's sake. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. And we can see that now for many years. And now we in the coronavirus pestilence. The heaven and earth is manifest unto you, Israelites and Gentiles. For we are the season for the Messiah to come back. Let us keep going. Verse 30. And again, because iniquity shall abound, the love of men shall wax cold. But he that shall not be overcome, the same shall be saved. And again, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Or the destruction of the wicked. And again shall the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet be fulfilled. Now, I pause here because he said what the kingdom. What is the one book that has been translated to all nations as prophesied in the book of Mark? See, there's many books out here, y'all. Many books. Such as the Sefer Bible, which have blasphemies in it. Again, the channel has the video on that. To let you see the blasphemies, the lies that's in that book. And even Israelites had told the publisher of the blasphemies and they would not change it. But this book, the 1611, has been translated and published throughout the four corners of the earth. The gospel. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 32. And again shall the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet be, be fulfilled. And immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Verily, I say unto you, this situation which these things shall be shown forth shall not pass away until all I have told you shall be fulfilled. And we can see this evident today. But we are that blessed generation that, that should see the Holy One that's coming in the name of Yahuwah. Verse 35. Although the days will come, the heaven and earth shall pass away, yet my word shall not pass away, but all shall be fulfilled. So we know the Father will bring the new heaven and new earth. See, this is something that Christianity, the Roman Christian, has not taught y'all Christians. Who will be the new heaven, new earth? Because we know heaven going to be joined to earth at Jerusalem. And when the Father bring the new Jerusalem. So who's going to be the new heaven, new earth? To understand the blueprint of what's going to take place in the new earth, read Ezekiel chapter 40 to 48. Mm -hmm. That pertains to the nation of Israel. But for the bride and 144, you're going to have to watch the all. Um, 
video that pertains to the rapture doctrine to understand what's your inheritance and where it's going to be taking place. Also, you have to watch the marriage supper of the Lamb, O Bride and Messiah, and 144. All right, let's read 36. And as I said before, after the tribulation of those days, the tribulation of who? Of the Jews, y'all. And the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. The Son of Adam in heaven, y'all. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. See the tribes. See how the Father talk about tribes. He also talk about nation, but tribes. Israelites. Negroes. See how the European has called us so many other things. And they, they ignorantly call us black. Black. That's not our name of our tribe. Address us properly. Address us by our tribe name. Do you hear me, Christians? Do you hear me, Christian apologetics? Do you hear me, anyone? Do you hear me, heathens? Address us by our tribe name. Don't come out of disrespect. Be respectful. You don't see us saying white Europeans or, or yellow Chinese. Come on now. So when we are identify ourselves as Hebrew Israelites, that's what you should address us as, as Hebrew Israelites. For you know, we come in different shades of brown. Yes, different shades of brown. So don't ignorantly say black Hebrew Israelites. Because when you do that, I ought to know what you're about. I ought to know what's in your heart. Let me read this again. Started at this part here. Where my cursor at. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. To understand how he's going to be coming. Read Revelation 19 and Revelation 14. In Revelation 15, how he be coming that in those clouds of heaven. Also read 2 Ezra chapter 13. Let's keep on. Verse 37. And whosoever treasure of my word shall not be deceived, for the Son of Man shall come. He shall send his angels before him with the great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together the remainder of his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. So he's telling you he's going to send his angels to gather you, O oh, elect. Do you hear that? From the what? Four winds. Mm -hmm. And that's a mystery on that. Again, the video that's dealing with the marriage supper of the Lamb gives you that mystery. See, the bride has to be prepared. The 144,000 has to be prepared for that part, y'all. Because there's more that's going to take place after Babylon is destroyed. More is to come, y'all. Again, you have to be teaching under the spirit. Stop, stop following man. Get in your word. Get in your book. If you don't understand something, cry out to y'all. And he will give it unto you at his, at his appointed time. He will feed you. He will nourish you. Verse 38. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When its branches are yet tender and it begins to put forth leaves, you know that summer is not at hand. So likewise, my elect, when they shall see all these things, they shall know that he is near, even at the doors. Oh my goodness. But of that day and hour, no one know, no, not the angels of Yahuwah in heaven, but my father only. So as you see, look what, look what the father has stirred in my spirit. I'm showing y'all about the time that we end, the day that we end from Adam, the day that we end from creation. I'm showing you what Second Ezra written in chapter seven. Yes. Do you see that the Father is giving you witnesses unto you to show you about the time? Because what did the Messiah tell us to do? He said, "Watch and pray." So those that were keeping a record of time, we see how this going hand with prophecy, y'all. Do y'all not see this? Right here, it said what? So like lies, my elect, when they shall see all these things, they shall know that he is near. Y'all, we are ringing the bell. The elect is ringing the bell and telling y'all the time is near. He's coming. He's coming. Prepare yourself. Get your house in order. Make it right with y'all. Why? Why ye have time? Let us keep going. Verse 
verse 41. But as it was in the days of Noah, it shall be also at the coming at the son of man, the son of Adam. For it shall be with them as it was in the days which were before the flood. For until the day that Noah entered into the ark, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving to marriage. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall, the, so shall also the, the coming of the Son of Man be. Remember he said he would come in a thief in the night, y'all. Also read Revelations 14 and Matthew 13 and see. <laughs> How he going to deal with the wicked? Mm. Verse 44. Then shall be fulfilled that which is written, that in the last days two shall be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two shall be grinding at meal, the one shall be taken, and the other left. And what I say unto one, I say unto all men, watch therefore, for you know not at what hour your Lord. Your donate do come. See, this is why we got to watch y'all. You don't know when he coming. Remember, there's different gatherings at different times. You got to read the book of the prophets to see when the nation of Israel are gathered because it's multiple gatherings for them. See, Revelation 12, we're building a whole lot. It's a summary of what the prophets been writing, what they said, how this gathering will take place. There's a gathering for the bride. There's a gathering for the 144. There's a gathering for the nation of Israel. They is chosen to go in the wilderness. And those who make it through will be allowed to enter to the Holy Land. Remember, there's two wilderness and Torah. Give you the example. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say. Y'all go ahead and watch the rapture doctrine. It's, it's a lot more to this, y'all. A lot more. And you're going to have to watch. The mystery of the eagle wings. The mystery of the saints becoming white. And the mystery of the marriage, the supper lamb, y'all. It's so much. But let us keep going. But know this. If, if the good man of the house have known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to have been broken up, but would have been ready. So the same way you be on guard for a thief, y'all. That would come in your house. It's the same way we be on guard for the coming of the Messiah. Because we know he's going to gather his bride. We know he's going to gather the 144. We know he's going to gather the chosen remnant of the nation of Israel to go into the wilderness and into the Holy Land. Because when you read Revelation 12, there are those who are not gathered that has to face the serpent. And after the Messiah overcome the fourth beast kingdom with the 144. Then the Gentile will bring the rest of the Jews to their homeland. Y'all, it's, it's so much to this. Mm -hmm. Then ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord had made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord. Adone, when he cometh, shall find so doing. And verily I say unto you, he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Do y'all hear that? We're going to be ruling with Messiah, the bride and the 144. Read Second Ezra chapter 1, because he give you an idea about the different leaders that the Father's going to set over the nation. Of, I'm sorry, that the Father's going to set over the nation in, of Israel and or, and over the other nations of the earth. Do y'all hear that? Okay. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord, Adonai, the lay of his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with, with drunken, Adonai, the Lord of that servant, shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and shall appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. And thus cometh the end of the wicked, according to the prophecy of Moses, saying, They shall be cut off from among the people, but the end of the earth is not yet, but by and by. And that cut off. Notice him. You go back and you look at language from the Hebrew to the Greek to the Old English to the modern English. Cut off, we know what it means to be what? To be put to death, to be put to an end. 
But when you read high it up, he used the word taken. It's a difference between these words, y'all. But I can understand why y'all got confused. Remember, the children say they're very good at what they do, very crafty. Remember our inheritance, O bride of the Messiah, and, and, and 144,000. Our inheritance come by our faith. But we are judged by our faith, our works, and our heart. Do not let these wicked, wicked children of Satan deceive you out of your great inheritance. Do you hear me? Well, I have said enough. Y'all, the links will be in the video description box. Check it out for yourself. And also, I will attach the playlist so you can have access to all those other videos that um, I was mentioning in this video. And make sure you listen to Yahuwah prophetic message because he has spoken. See, Yahuwah has given us prophets and prophetess in these last days. And they are speaking and telling you what season we are in. And they are telling you what Yahuwah wants. Stop listening to these Pharisees, Sadducees, and, and Herodians of today. Stop listening to the Christian apologetics. Stop listening to the wicked Hebrew Israelite camps who are not preaching the whole truth. Listen to the spirit of Yah. Listen to his word. And I bid y'all a shalom. And continue to preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Make sure the people receive salvation as written in Romans chapter 10. And baptize the people in the name of, of Yahushua HaMashiach. For they must receive the baptism of the water and of the spirit. And the apostles continue to both. I love you all. And I hope you enjoyed this word as I did. The, the Yahuwah is revealing so much in these last days. He is cleaning up the lies with truth. And that's what we must do now. Speak his truth. Not what you want. Not what you think. Not what some... Um, Philosopher said, or what you think, this come by spirit, not by flesh. Shalom.